Welcome to Overland Expo East 2023. You might notice there's actually not a lot of people here at the moment. That's because today is setup day. We're actually here a day early setting up our booth, the revereoverland.com booth. Uh, but it's a perfect time to just get a quick look around while there's not a bunch of crowds. So we'll take a look and see what's worth looking at this year. This is one of the things I'm most excited about seeing at probably the whole show. This is the new Toyota Land Cruiser, the 2024 Land Cruiser. And uh, it's very different from the previous generation. And it actually fits in with how I envision my vehicle fleet a little bit better than the 200 series Land Cruiser did. I like the size of it. I like I like a lot about it. Um, and actually, one of the things is the new powertrain with that four cylinder hybrid produces more torque than the 200 series did. Now this one is the base model and that's probably gonna be closer to my price range <laughs> that I'll be looking at. So it's something that I'm really interested in and there is a chance that they'll let me into this later. Jake here from SHW Off-Road. We are a vehicle storage manufacturer from Kentucky. It's where we manufacture all of our products. And today, right next to me, we have our Ultralight series featuring a brand new finish called Ultraliner. Three things that make the Ultralight series really unique are its weight, its custom fit, and the fact that the drawers actually become totes. These three things alone make the SHW Off-Road Ultralight Series one of the most functional drawer systems on the market. However, we do much more than just SUV drawer systems. We do drawer systems for truck beds, we do seat deletes, and we even do some tailgate storage units. This is an example of one of our SUV seat deletes. This is for a Jeep JLU, and we've manufactured and provided the option to make it level with our drawer system, providing a full sleep surface from the cargo trunk all the way up to the front seats. We can achieve these factory contours using 3D scanning. We do some CAD modeling and then CNC cutting. All of our seat deletes feature one or two access panels featuring a simple finger hole to save weight and to keep them perfectly flush with the deck of the seat delete. Fortunately, even without a latch, our seat delete lids do not rattle. They sit in the contours perfectly to minimize rattle, especially when you get gear in them and on them. Now, the secret weapon to some of the SHW off-road seat deletes are the optional lower drawers. The Jeep JLU tall seat delete features two drawers, one on top of the other. Other vehicles that we support with drawers include the Toyota Tacoma, as well as the Jeep Gladiator JT. All of our drawers for our seat deletes feature a toggle latch and they are keyed. The whole point of these lower drawers are so that even when you have gear stacked to the ceiling, you can still access the contents of the seat delete. To complement the drawer system height seat deletes, we also offer low seat deletes. These low seat deletes work really well if you don't have an SHW off-road drawer system, or if you wanna have a lowered platform to store things like a fridge, ice chest, tools, etc. On my last trip in the Olympic Peninsula, the video I just put out, we ran into some unpleasant uh, campsites that were ruined by people who were pooping and leaving it out in the woods. So I've just noticed this thing called the Thunderbox. Let's take a look at it. So this is the Thunderbox. It is an Australian made portable camping toilet. <clears throat> this is the carrying case that uh, it comes in. So to set up and deploy the toilet, take it out of the bag. It's about an inch thick when it's collapsed. There's an accordion hinge that you swing open. You would throw in a bag liner. This is a biodegradable plastic uh, toilet liner that we include with a purchase. It's strong enough to be packed out, but it's designed to be buried and broke down. So throw in your uh, waist liner. <clears throat> There's these uh, lip here to uh, line up. Closing this will uh, keep the bag from going anywhere. There's one latch you spin at the front to lock the toilet in place. Sit down, do your business. When you're not using it, we have a little lid here that you would close, keeps the smells in and the bugs out. This is the same height and hole as a standard US uh, toilet. And it's weight rated at 500 pounds. We stacked bricks on it and uh, ran out of bricks at 500-ish pounds. Uh, and I don't remember if I've already mentioned, but it's all handmade in Australia with 100% Australian uh, components. This is galvanized steel and MDF, and they're uh, handmade. Like this lid was cut from this same piece of wood, um, and they are made in uh, 
Victoria, Australia. We attend several of the Overland Expos and we also have a website. Uh, we are online at thunderboxusa.com. It's happening. I've got the keys. Same as my Tundra. Yeah. Let's get in. Yeah, the, 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 the. yeah, let's turn it on, see what we've got. Oh, well, I can't turn the engine on. So up here, information, you've got the power, because it's obviously the hybrid. Tells you how charged the batteries are, whether you're running on gas or on the, the electric engine. Uh, around it, this one's got the smaller screen, because again, the base model. Uh, looks like we've got automatic climate control. Hopefully that's a little better than the one in my Tundra. Uh, and then same style switches. Very rugged feel. I like the steering wheel, very premium feel. It uh, kind of makes up for the cloth seats. I like it. This is actually surprisingly nice. And you know, even though I'm used to the size of the Tundra, this is pretty good. And this is the base model, so you got the fabric seats and uh, even manually adjusting seats on what's going to be a like mid $50,000 vehicle. But it's, it's not bad. I could see myself driving this. Let's talk about some of the off-road stuff because obviously that's what I really care about. Um, so in the center here, this thing's full-time, four-wheel drive. Uh, you can go into low range using this toggle switch here uh, with the center open and then you can lock the center separately. So that's really nice if, you, if you're on a mountain pass going up like switchbacks, you don't want the center locked, uh, which in my Tundra or my 4Runner, it made turning time look difficult. Uh, this also comes with the rear locker standard, so that's another nice feature um, you've got the second start which is great for mud or for sand starts and then all of the modes here so I can switch between uh, the different multi-terrain select modes I can use crawl control which is actually massively improved on this versus the forerunner so I'm six foot one and I'm really comfortable in the front here with plenty of leg room and tons of headroom as well what I need to do now is get in the back seat right behind where my chair is and see how that is Actually, again, a shocking amount of space. This does not have the third row in it, which may help. There's a lot of leg room in here. And with the high ceiling of the Land Cruiser, tons of headroom as well. Like, I, I'm just reclining back here. Loads of space. In the back, this does not have the roll down window like the Forerunner did. Instead, top hops. So you've got easy access there. Then if we open up, we can get an idea of how much space is in here. Again, a lot of space. You can see that this Land Cruiser is slightly bigger than the Forerunner, and, and you can tell from the interior space. So uh, put a nice raw system in there. So obviously something that's lacking here is ground clearance, tires, suspension, that kind of thing. You know, on this base model, you've got basically street tires on 18-inch wheels. It's got to go. Uh, probably replaced with 17-inch wheels and, uh, what do you think, 35s? And I really like a lot of the styling on this thing. You can see where it's taken a lot of cues from some of the older generation Land Cruisers going way back. It's cool to see where they have worked a lot of little things into it. So I can see this thing working better for me than the Jeep does. What do you think? Sell the Jeep and get this? Or should I stick with the Jeep? And of course we have the Lexus GX 550 here, which is very similar to the Land Cruiser uh, in the body and the frame, uh, but more luxurious. Even though this is the, uh, the base model, the premium, <laughs> which is the base model, uh, it has a lot more features and a lot more luxuries than Land Cruiser does. Uh, it does have a different powertrain as well. So this one uh, has the 3.4 liter V6 turbo, uh, twin turbocharged V6. It's the same as I have in my Tundra, whereas the Land Cruiser's got that turbocharged four cylinder with the hybrid system. So no hybrid in here. Let's take a look inside. So as you can see, the interior of this is much more refined. Lots of soft touch materials, including along the dash here. Huge screen in the center console there, uh, showing me what's going on with the vehicle. And you can't help but notice the massive screen up front here, which is gonna be awesome for navigation using things like Onyx uh, and the camera system that's on this. You also got a lot of the same buttons in here, just slightly different layout. Um, if you go with some of the more Overland trims, you get that rear locker. Uh, let's take a look in the back seat. Uh, last time I sat in this, there wasn't much room in the back. So I think we can adjust this so I'm comfortable. There we go. So plenty of room in the front. 
Let's go check the back seat and see how much space we've got. In the back, I've got just the same amount of room as I had in the Land Cruiser, which makes a lot of sense. However, if you go with some of the more high-end trims, the seat back is actually curved in them, which gives you even more leg room, and the back seat moves back and forth, where in this one, since this is the base model, the back seat is fixed in location, and in the Land Cruiser, the back seat is fixed in location. But these seat materials are very nice. It is incredibly comfortable. So the GX is a very nice alternative to the Land Cruiser. Uh, unfortunately, the price isn't officially going to be released until around December, apparently. However, while I was over there, I heard some really juicy gossip. Um, the, uh, the base price of the premium, the one that we're in, uh, is apparently going to start at 63,000 and some change. Uh, and then you add some options on there. So things like the 360 camera adds like $900. Um, so it's not going to be too much more. Uh, when you compare it to something like the Land Cruiser, which is going to be starting in the mid 50s. Unfortunately, I wasn't told the exact price or the exact starting price of the Overtrail, um, but we're looking probably low 70s for that uh, from what I heard. Hey, my name's Ricky. I'm here with Luno at uh, Overland East, and we are a uh, car camping accessory brand. Our flagship product is inflatable car mattresses that are tailor fit to SUVs, trucks, um, and even front cab uh, vans. So uh, we've developed everything to be a custom tailor fit to vehicles. Uh, we currently fit uh, around 2,400 different uh, makes, models, and years. Uh, you can find all that on our website. Uh, we also make uh, a range of accessories from window screens to internal storage, uh, privacy curtains, anything to make your camping experience a little bit more comfortable and enjoyable. Uh, we pride ourselves on accessories that are accessible, easy to use, allow you to convert your daily driver into a comfortable camping experience. Um, yeah, and everything is available on lunolife.com and we have a great social media team as well, so please follow us on socials and check everything out there. I saw these roller cams at Overland Expo Pacific Northwest, told myself I'd go back and buy one, and then forgot. So now here I am, I'm gonna get one, let's show you what they got. One of our newest products is the rope roller, which has been a pretty great seller. It's an easy, easy device to cinch both like your 550, this is 550 paracord, or like your three and four millimeter accessory cord. Um, easy release, it also has a cool little clip, so that clip allows you to clip on to tent sewn uh, tabs and such, and then just easy cinch down. We have a working load of around 40 pounds and they'll break at about 110. Lots of uses, here's another great use for it. You're in your campsite, you've got a light hang, hanging up that you want to adjust up, easy to use. Um, in addition, we also sell all of our roller cam products. Uh, the roller cam has an integrated brass roller in it and so that roller eliminates friction which allows you to tighten things way more securely. They come in a bunch of different configurations, uh, one foot to 20 feet. Um, we have different ends as well so we have the standard everyone knows the hook end right all of our hooks come with an integrated clip so they stay on your eyelet at your truck or what have you and then we also sell the loop ends, which are very, very popular with overlanding. The loop end has, we can show it to you right here on this cooler, has two pieces, has a long end, and then the short end that loops around a eyelet like that. And then to cinch it up, you just simply, and you have a nice secure strap. Roller cams are offered on the website, rollercam.com. We also have a bunch of retailers throughout the U.S. Uh, if you get on our website, you can see where you can buy them in, in person. Hi, I'm, I'm Tom and uh, this is Sport Keg. Uh, the, the magic with Sport Keg is, is that as you're drinking the beer down, the headspace that you're creating is being filled back with pure CO2. So the beer can't go flat, it's not being exposed to oxygen, and light can't, can't penetrate. So if the brewer says that his batch is good for six weeks, it's good for six weeks in this thing, even if you only drank half of it the first day, just like a kegerator would do at your house, but shrunk down for camping size. Okay. It also eliminates the bottles and cans, so if you go to breweries often, 
the canning and bottling process costs that small brewer a lot of money. So if you eliminate that out of the equation, you can save some money. Uh, it also condenses, if you've got an Iceco or a, or a Dometic refrigerator and you're bringing cans and bottles, they take up a lot of space. And you're trying to pack for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for four or five days, there's not a lot of room left. So cans and bottles are taking up a lot of space you don't realize. And then you got to take those cans and bottles home with you. So there's, there's that headache as well. So you're saving the earth from the trash and, and garbage, and we're all tired of seeing cans and bottles when we pull up to a camp spot. You know, it saves your beer from spoiling. You don't have to drink it all at once like you do for a growler. And uh, saves space in your fridge and saves money at the brewery. So eventually pays for itself. Uh, you can get eight and a half, 16 ounce pints in this guy. This is 10 and a half. Uh, this would be four pints. And this guy holds 21. They all come with an insulated cooler bag that has refreezable ice packs inside there. They come with 16 CO2 charges. They come with 16 CO2 canisters. I've got a special on one. This comes with four. It's a smaller size. I call it the Margarator. It's $79.99 plus buy one, get one half off, but that's just a show special. But stay tuned. I might, I might have some specials on my website very soon. www.sportkeg.com. I want to show you guys the Gazelle ground tents because these are a great alternative to a rooftop tent. And they're proof that you don't have to have a rooftop tent to have something that is spacious and super quick and easy to set up. We actually uh, bought the gazebo and that thing can be set up in like 90 seconds. Super easy. And the ground tents are basically the same thing. They go up the same way. And uh, we really, really like ours. And I know everyone that gets one of these loves them. The only downside is that when they're packed up, they are still enormous. We have this gazebo. This is the smaller of the two. And it's about the same size as the tents. And uh, when it's all packed away, it's about five and a half feet long. So it only just fits inside our truck bed or if you had a long roof rack, it's gonna take up the entire length of the roof rack. But other than that, they are awesome tents. SHW Off-Road is very proud and excited to announce a brand new product in our catalog and it is cabinet fit outs for the Alucab Canopy Camper. The first vehicle to be supported with our cabinet system is the Jeep Gladiator JT and it features a number of modules that can be assembled together to create a full system. First thing in the system is a cabinet. It sits up top and features a couple of shelves. It really operates well as a full pantry. You have access to this pantry from both the inside and the outside with the drop down cabinet, which I'll show you later. In the middle of this module, you have a couple pop out drawers, great place to store small items, spices and the like, and you get two of those. Below our top cabinet, we have our lower cabinet. This particular version of our lower cabinet has a Truma propane heater built into it. This cabinet extends all the way to the back of the cab of the truck and offers tons and tons of storage. Following along to the cab side of the truck, we have a water tank down low. That's to keep the center of gravity low, as well as any make any maintenance or spills easy to fix. And up top, we have another large cabinet it's a great spot for flat items and other low profile equipment. Off to the right side in this vehicle, we have mounted a hot shower. It features a hinge that locks at about halfway so that the shower can be operated from outside the vehicle. It's important to note that all of our toggle latches feature locks and they're all keyed the same for each particular build. One of the most revolutionary features of the SHW Offroad cabinet system is the drop down cabinet. In the drop down cabinet, you get access to the contents that we saw earlier inside the vehicle. And this entire cabinet lowers and gives you great access to all the contents while you're cooking on the outside or food prepping on the outside of the vehicle. Just like all the other cabinets, this one has two toggle latches and they are keyed. The SHW Offroad cabinet system can be bought as a complete system or it can also be pieced out. Each module you've seen today can be purchased individually and installed individually. It's also important to note on the right hand side of the truck, there are pending some additional modules in the future. So make sure you stay tuned, sign up for our newsletter at shwoffroad.com. 
Fabric.com and make sure you follow us on all the social media platforms. Well, hi, my name is Jeremy. I'm with 813 Fabrication. Um, I am the owner and designer and we make a bunch of different stuff for the Jeeps, Jeep Gladiators, Jeep Wranglers, um, a lot of different accessories for the Audi Cab and Audi Cabin campers. Uh, specifically focus a lot on air compressor mounts. Uh, I've got maybe 10 different ways of mounting air compressors on the Jeep Gladiators, a half a dozen different ways on the uh, Wranglers. Um, I've been working specifically with Vier on coming up with some new mounts for their new uh, VMS system. So for behind the rear driver's seats on the Gladiators as well as underneath the front seats for both Jeeps. Uh, I'm trying to get back out and do more stuff for some of the other vehicles, uh, Tacomas, Tundras and things, uh, so it is something that's going to be coming. But most everything that I make is, um, it's all aluminum. I have a few uh, items that I do make that's all in stainless, but um, everything basically made so that it's corrosion resistant. But like I said, as far as the Alu cab, uh, you know, I have a lot of different mounts for rotopacks. Uh, different accessory mounts. I do have a locking rear deadbolt for the uh, Audi cab and Audi cabins, uh, as well as there are not on not in this truck, but I do have a lot of uh, water tank Molly panels and stuff. So, like I say, just a lot of different accessories for the Audi cabs and also Jeep Gladiators and Jeep Wranglers at the moment. So, all right. So, as far as some of the accessories for the Audi cab and Audi cabins, I do have. The rear deadbolt for the, cam uh, the campers, these do work. Doesn't matter if it's Jeep Gladiators, the Rangers, the Colorados, it also works for the IU cabins. Just depends on what system we use for the mounting stuff. So the way it works is just bolts directly, or wires directly into the key fob system, especially it's really easy on the Jeep Gladiators because it goes in with the tailgate wiring. Uh, but this way it just makes everything lock in and you are a lot more secure. Um, some of the other mounts I have, as far as the, I call them the half panel accessory panels uh, that are on the back side for mounting gas cans, um, other accessories, so there's a lot of bolt holes and slots to be able to mount your stuff. Uh, one of our new products that's going to be available in the next week or so is the new filler panel for the rear of the Jeep Gladiators with the Audi cab. Since there is no filler plate that comes through there, uh, there will be a solid version as well as a version that will have the cameras available to be mounted in it. Which also, me, uh, another one of the products is the above the door camera mount, which will also work pretty much with any of the Audi cabs. Uh, if you'd like to see more of our stuff, go to 813fabrication.com. We're also on Instagram and Facebook at 813fabrication. Um, I'm always online, always available for questions. So if you ever have anything you need to know or want to ask, just please do so. Hello, my name is Roz Mario. I'm with Enios Automotive, and this is our brand new Enios Grenadier. So uh, a while back, our, our founder, Sir Jim Ratcliffe had the idea of um, when the classic Land Rover Defender went out of production, wanted to buy the tooling of that old Defender, didn't happen, so instead he engineered his own. So in partnership with Magnus Steyr, engineered this vehicle that you see in front of you, and came up with this crazy idea in a pub called the Grenadier, which is why the Enios Grenadier has its name. Um, it comes with a BMW 3 liter inline six, a uh, single turbo with an 8-speed ZF transmission. It's got Recaro seats, standard, Brembo brakes, uh, Tremec transfer case, and um, it's a 4x4 full-time all-wheel drive, integrated winch front and rear. And um, they'll be available in the United States. We start delivering in November of this year. And over 7,000 pre-orders that we'll be delivering throughout 2024. So check out EniosGrenadier.com for more information. Thank you so much. One of the things we've had going on at our booth of the show is an educational class from Mike Morrison every single day, several times a day. Right now he's teaching a recovery class. Yesterday we had him doing tire patch class. Uh, and actually, I need to show you those in a minute. Um, if you want to learn more from him, he is an incredibly knowledgeable person. Him and his wife work together uh, with Morrison's Outdoor Adventures. And they've got classes going on throughout the year, uh, mostly based out of Kentucky, where we're at. Um, so go check them out, morrisonsoutdooradventures.com. And I've got to give a shout out to Cedar Ridge Campers. They have this beautiful teardrop trailer fiberglass shell, full queen bed on the inside, 
lots of storage above where your feet go, and then a huge galley in the back and a stove and fridge that slide out on the sides. The reason I gotta mention them is because they're kind of local to me. They're uh, just down the road in Kentucky, uh, and weird thing is, I ran into them on my latest Alaska trip, middle of nowhere, and uh, we all work together to help rescue an RV that's stuck in the mud. Now these trailers start at $31,000, but this one fully outfitted, so you got a water heater, air heater, water tank, basically a kitchen, fridge, awning, everything you see here, including the power and the Red Ox system, all together comes to 39,000. And for something with this much attention to detail and quality is, uh, Probably one of the cheapest I've seen. That is uh, an amazing price. Hi guys, um, I'm Leo from Scotty Girl. Scotty Girl is the world's first portable gas barbecue um, that is completely flat packing, fits under any car seat, whatever you like. I'll show you in a minute how it's set up. It's completely built out of stainless 304 material, so actually built for a lifetime. You can see the quality over here. Actually, the corners are hand polished so you don't cut your fingers. Um, how it's set up, pretty simple. You can do it in less than 30 seconds if you want to. I'm guiding you through it quickly. So to make it easy, we have two little triangles on the corner here. You slide them in together, put them aside. You take the remaining of the bigger pieces and in literally 20 seconds or 30 seconds, you can have a perfectly workable fire pit solution. This is our grease pan. It also serves as your underlay or as a tray. If you want to use charcoal or wood, feel free to do so. It's not a problem at all. You just stick it together and in like 20 seconds you have a regular fire pit. If you use charcoal, we always recommend put a little bit of dirt or sand below it. It just keeps the body in shape, also makes the cleaning up uh, afterwards much, much easier. But now to the star of the show. This one is the world's first portable burner pipe. Usually you'll find that in any gas barbecue firmly mounted to the body to the structure of the barbecue. With us it's pretty portable. This is why we can make the barbecue so flat packed. You just slide it in. It's as simple as it is genius. You take our heat distribution plate, slide this one in and with the last piece we're collecting the barbecue, taking it high up and just slowly slide it in so that in 20 seconds you build up your barbecue. You take the griddle, slide it into the top lock it and you're good to go the system is done ready to barbecue same applies to our cap same logic we have two little triangles it fits into the same bag comes in a separate bun but if you want to use it in one bag feel free to do so you slide in the other edge you take the middle plate the trick is always to come from one side put it in and close it on the other side and already now i can use it more or less like an oven so you see around here, we also have a substitute for the griddle, like a pizza stone. You want to have a pizza bakery oven. But otherwise, you just take the last piece, let it slide in quickly and lock it back up. And now you're perfectly set up for your barbecue. It saves electricity, the gas, obviously. Um, and you can use it in any other way. We kept the flat top for you to actually use it as a secondary heat plate. Heat plate, for example, put the patties in here, put the burger buns on the top and you're good to go. The grill tong, last piece that I want to show you, is the handle. You can slide it into diff two different directions, this for a little bit of circulation. If you really want to put it up and you need to use it as a surface, slide to the other one. Take the handle out and have an amazing time. Check out our webpage, we got plenty of other features like pizza stones, like pikes to make delicious chicken skewers. We have boxes that fit perfectly over here that turns the barbecue into a multifunctional outdoor kitchen. Any questions, feel free to ask us. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching our little presentation. www.scottygrill.com. Very easy. With a dash in the middle, scotty-grill.com. This is something that is new and really, really cool. Um, or actually really, really hot. Because this is a diesel heater. But this is not like any typical diesel heater. Uh, this is probably the best and most well thought out diesel heater that I have seen maybe ever. Uh, obviously with your typical diesel heater you have to get a lot of power to it because it pulls like 100 amps or something ridiculous. Uh, this one is self-powered so you've got a set of batteries down here that start it up, get it going and then this is actually a generator as well 
So once it's going, it's going to recharge those batteries. So this thing's really cool. It also has a built-in tank with a proper valve on the top. If you've bought one of those cheap diesel heaters, you'll know that they leak really bad. So this one won't. It's got a 1.2 gallon tank, and that's enough to last or run it for about 15 hours. If you want to learn more about this, it's on JITSales.com, and the price of this whole setup together is $1,500. My name is Michael Davis. I am Hard Impact Designs. I'm super happy to be here with Revere Overland. I have designed and developed a quick release for rooftop tent mounts, and it's really actually a multi-use piece. It's every, the system is held in place by a lock ball pin. When the pin comes out, your tent comes right off. And when you're ready to set off on your adventure, you simply drop your tent or your cargo box or your recovery boards onto that lower mount, insert your pin, and it's that simple, it's done. It takes a minute, 30 seconds to get the tent installed and pull out of the house changed my life. There is an option to purchase this, uh, a locking pin and so just a simple key fob there you see and uh, with this option you can then feel a little more secure that no one can come along and just take your tent off of your truck. I know people are concerned about theft so this is our theft device. Uh, visit me at hardimpactdesigns.com that's the website. You can also find me on Instagram at hardimpactdesigns as well. So anything Hard Impact Designs, plug it into Google and you'll find me. Last thing I'm going to show you is one thing that we have in our own booth from RiveraOfLand.com. One of my favorite things and something I've just added to my own kit is the Glue Tread Tire Repair Kit. This is actually the complete kit, but one of the highlights is the sidewall repair patches. These things are amazing and they hold the air in really, really well. The reason I've added it is because out of all the punctures and flat tires I've had, like 90% of them are sidewall tears. So finally, I have something that I can patch it with because uh, you know you can't plug a big tear in the sidewall. Uh, this one is the complete kit. So we have the basic kit that just comes with the patches uh, on the website, riveroverland.com, it's about $60. This one's the complete one. So this comes with plugs as well, which I've needed once. Uh, and the only time I've ever needed a plug was in the middle of a parking lot, a Shell gas station parking lot, ran over a screw. Uh, also comes with Colby valves. Those are super useful. I have bust a couple of valve stems. So this whole kit is really worth having. And uh, this one is 125 or around 125 on our website. This is something you're interested in, whether it's this one or the base one, it's on revereoverland.com. Well, that is it for Overland Expo East. We have pretty much just got done packing up our stuff. The truck, you can see, is slightly squatted because we've got stacks and stacks of boxes in there. We've got fridges in the back seat, uh, boxes. You might even be able to see a little glimpse of the boxes in the top of the habitat, boxes on the front of the habitat, and then all up in the middle. So it is loaded down and we're about to head home. If you like this video or if you want to see more stuff with the Tundra, our adventures, we're actually getting ready to go to Utah right now to go film the eclipse. Definitely subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's gonna help me with my goal of reaching 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, which I'm actually not currently on track to reach. So it'd be amazing to have you. Plus, like I said, you get to see our next trip video. Thanks for watching.